Coming up on today's podcast, I want to chat about Reese Walsh's latest Instagram post that's causing quite the controversy. Mm, hard hitting. We'll get tech expert Trevor Long on to let us know what Apple's latest announcements actually mean. This is huge. And I'm fascinated by what's going on in the world of fashion. fashion. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. I said burr. burr. It's, it's cold, cold in here. here. I said there must be some content in the Yeah, man. Five Brew seconds ha-ha. each to pitch some gear. What's going on, Lockie? You seem slightly you seem concerned. Agitated. What's wrong, mate? It's kind of weird. Alicia just kind of walked through, out, out of the studio almost. She's psyching you up, mate. Do you, have a, do you have a, a toss or a... Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Just to calm your yep. nerves. To work out who goes first. Like, do you toss a, uh, Alicia a coin? Just, Alicia pointed to me and said, you go first. Like, oh. That's, why, time. that's so, why you're put off. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Anyway. Look, just stay in your lane and concentrate on yourself. Don't so. worry about what other people are doing. Control the controllables. Control the controllables. Thanks, Susie. Thank you. You ready? Although, I think although so. she, she's effectively <laughs> just words. spat in your lane no, I, while you're yeah. standing on the box there. Who? Alicia. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, true. Ready? Yep. Aldi stores unable to sell previous best-selling item. What could it be? Oh. Oh. Mm. Ski gear. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ski mm. gear. No, I mm. reckon it's the um, meatballs. What? That's yeah. Ikea, mate. Ikea. So <laughs> 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 uh. yeah. I was listening. Yeah, Just not comprehending. That's all. Alicia, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Simon Cowell once again hoping to change the face of music with new TV show. Uh. Mm, I've heard a little bit about this. It does interest me because I didn't read into it, that one. Uh, I'm Simon Cow, the ad. I'm going Aldi or yeah. Ikea. I'll go Simon Cow. Yep. I'm going to go Lockie because I'm really curious about this. I'm an Aldi shopper, so I am too. Aldi, Aldi, okay. Well, the other one, yeah, will, be the the other one will be in the podcast. We'll do a yeah, separate podcast uh, with Alicia's that, story. Yeah, I've heard a little that bit is about interesting because yeah. I've slightly read about I that as well. Uh, in my mind, he's chasing you 1D. Mm-hmm. That's what mm. I reckon as well. Uh, Buzz, Suze, give yourself a ding sound effect because you were right. Oh. Uh, Aldi stores unable to sell uh, ski gear at the moment. Wow, good get. Um, the snow, Why? the snow. Well, the snow season kicked off over the weekend, um, really? but you wouldn't know because there was only one chairlift in operation across all of Australia. Really? Yeah, the weather. Oh no, I did hear not, that. Not I, great for it at the moment. I heard that it's looking on the improve, which is that I heard on the news last night. Drastically needed for our ski fields. Mm. Massively needed, uh, and and obviously closer to home. Aldi, Aldi can't sell any ski gear at the moment because people. It's kind of sad, but cost of living means that people aren't going to to the snowfields for holidays. So yeah. all the, all the ski gear is just stocking up in the special buy section at Aldi, mm. uh, and it's pretty cheap already. I imagine it, they might discount it even further if they can't get rid of it. It is cheap. Well, like we got it once for our kids. It's mm. like like it's ridiculously mm. cheap compared yeah. to you know. Normal stuff, yeah. and then when you go to the the Australian slopes, did everyone is everyone is wearing the wearing same the Aldi, outfit? All yeah. the kids, the Australian the slopes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I go to Switzerland. Yeah, well, you don't, you don't say. see it in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> in hot garden. <laughs> where, we went to, where did we go? I'm trying to think. Oh, we well, well, this is a thing. One Canberra. Buller, re- Mount Buller. <laughs> Mount Buller, okay. Um, one Canberra reporter suggests that those, who, those who actually can afford to go to the snow at the moment, so, uh, <laughs> despite the poor conditions, probably aren't shopping at Aldi anyway. So, well, exactly. Uh, mm. uh, they're not we- wearing Aldi gear. Mm. They're wearing something else, I guess. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you a name, Suze. Do you know any off the top of your head? Ah, oh, geez, like MacPack or Patagonia? I don't know. I'm not yeah. familiar. I'm just trying to North guess. Face, so that is ski gear? North Face. Yeah, it's a big, hit, a big hit at the moment, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Timmy and everyone's over there in Queenstown. He didn't even look cold over there. Oh, um, it is winter. Oh, Ricky Lee, Tim and Joel. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah, our team. Well, they've got the whole show over there. Yeah. Mm. There's an idea. It's food for thought, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Look yes. nice. Slope for hope. Yes, the slope of slope, hope. Slope slope hey, don't hey, well, well, hey, well, we haven't uh, organised all that yet. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's a great idea, great easy, name. Oh, it's an actual sad. winner. Because um, it's funny the things they have for sale there at Aldi, isn't it? People line up for 
kilometres. It is fun to shop there. Yeah. Bronte like, used to send me there to save money because we were spending too much money at the other grocery stores. And every time I came, I came back once with like a trolley, one of those. <laughs> she's like, "We're not, we're not planning on moving." I'm like, "You never know when you'll need it." <laughs> oh, he actually had it. You bought oh, it. You I bought it. One. It was eighty nine dollars. I thought you had a trolley yeah. full of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dyson. Yeah, that can happen pretty easily. Mm-hmm. That, that weird, middle, weird middle lane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> weird middle lane. I know. The Ash, Lutzy, and Susie O'Neill podcast. I saw Lutzy in a pair of jeans the other day, tight fitting jeans, and I said to myself, <laughs> oh, Here we go. <laughs> I said to myself, Damn, Lutzy's mm, looking good in there. Went, mm. Damn, Lutzy's looking good in those yeah, jeans. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but, because, and, and no, you'd start a conversation. <laughs> okay, just, just full, tra- full transparency yes, here. Yes, this did actually happen. Uh, we, Sue's had tightish jeans on the other day as well. And it, it started a conversation around jeans trends. Jean fashion. Moment, fashion at the moment. And they're going more to the baggy thing. And mm. I said, I said, you know, we've got, we got great legs, you and I, Susie. <laughs> yes. So why have we got to buck with trends? Yes. You know, and, well, why can't we buck with the trend and, and wear our tight jeans? Because I don't want to wear baggy jeans over these glorious pins. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that, well, that, was, that was the conversation That's we were at the kitchen. Because we were saying it's, it's so annoying that fashion just changes a little bit all the time. Like yeah. you, get a, you get a pair of jeans that you really like, for example, and that's the classic one that changes, I reckon, jeans. Yep. And it used to be tight fitting and... Well, look at Pat Carrigan when he comes in. What does he wear? Oh, Baggy? It's flopping around everywhere. Mm. Like, yeah, what is so his, his jeans. jeans. His oh. jeans. So the well, fashion you can't n- see what's in and out because oh. it's the so fashion, baggy. The fashion now for that next generation or two down is really baggy jeans. Yeah. It's like baggy, baggy, baggy. And and Lutzi and I have just really embraced the tight jeans and just, well, yes. all my jeans are tight fitting jeans and we were saying it's not fair that we've got to go to the baggy jeans just because it's yeah. fashion. But... It's that, it dates us, let's see, it dates us wearing tight jeans. Which is, there, therein lies the question, is like at, at our age, <laughs> yes. do we f- necessarily have to follow the trends of 20-something people? Well, no. Have, no. Or, or so. can we stick with what we do? Because will, will we look like fools if we start dressing like, you know, too <laughs> young? Pat Carrigan. Carrigan, yeah. I think it's got to be age appropriate, but I think we should move a little to what the fashion is, which is what I'm trying to do. I mean, you stay in your tight jeans because I agree. The, your pins are your best asset. Yeah, if you get if you can accentuate the calf a little bit through tight jeans, <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good look, don't yeah. you reckon? Not just for me, like for anyone. For, like anyone, you, yeah. for you, you, got, you know. You but know. I think, but I've decided to go just slightly baggy, not the super baggy because I can't dress like my daughter, but the the middle baggy. So I went to the I went to my favourite shop yesterday, Clexico, to buy one pair of jeans. Okay. Oh. One pair of jeans. I did it. I went. I thought before you went to your favourite shop, your, your kids' wardrobes, and were wearing <laughs> bills, weren't you? No, no. My kids have been wearing Cliffsole jeans. Ah, oh, right. My his shorts as well, right? And his shorts. Yeah. So it's all the 90s stuff is back. So everything that I, we were in high school or just after is fashion now. And Cliff has actually, he's a hoarder, and he keeps his things in perfect order. It might surprise you. And he has kept a lot of his clothes from back in the day. But Cliff can't wear baggy jeans now. He looks no, he's not, a, he's not a baggy jeans guy. How baggy are these things from Calexico you got? Not, not, um, not, not too baggy. Uh, are they, they flares? Because no. like, I know flares are coming back. Yeah, flares are coming back mm. too. The, they, they gave My wife just of, bought um, a pair of flares. Well, they're called Farrah's because there was heaps of jeans there I could get w- which were named after Farrah Fawcett. Robbie Farrah's. Yeah. Robbie Farrah's. Not Robbie no, Farrah's. Farrah, 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 Farrah Fawcett, Farrah which Christ. are tight down the, the leg and What about the... Um, baggy. <laughs> I'll tell you what... Well, I don't personally like it, but I don't know if it's still in now, but it certainly was, is the Harry High Pants jeans that yes. all the girls were wearing. Harry High Pants. All our kids wear Harry High Pants I jeans. I don't like that. Either do I. They're so uncomfortable. Like, if that's being cool, then. They look good, though, I must admit. They look <laughs> good, but I don't want to be cool. I don't know if boys wear Harry High Pants. I think no, it's just the girls. No, it's no. just the girls. Oh, some do. Yeah. Do they? It's just the do girls. Do they? What, the guys oh, no, are I've wearing seen Harry them. High right. Pants? I have seen people no, wearing them. Yeah. Yeah. Jeans tucked in. Yeah, usually in West End. And you know what yep, else is fashionable with young guys? I've noticed walking down the street, which is odd, is really short jeans and pants. Yeah. Like they don't go to their ankle. They're short. No. Plus they wear boots with them. I saw a guy in the city the other day who was certainly very fashionable. Um, high, Harry high pants, not super baggy, but slightly baggy. Um, pants to above his ankle and then RM Williams type boots. So do the jeans reach the RMs? No, Sounds like you're gap. describing Tim Blackwell. He does that. Oh yeah, he does too. Mm. He's a chameleon. He'll he'll switch and switch. Yeah. And he'll, he'll move with the times. Mm-hmm. Well, he definitely wears tight jeans. 
I don't think he does Traditionally, anymore. Traditionally, he, he has. I think, you'll, yeah. I think you'll find now really? he's yeah. wearing the baggies again. He's, he's given up tight jeans. Yeah. Well, yeah. He does the fashion short short God. jeans now. I'm but I think to, yeah. what was a good sign that shows that I am in fashion, I think, when I was getting um, changing into clothes at Calexico yesterday, I was trying on all this different stuff, and I went to put my jeans that I'd worn there back on. <laughs> Couldn't find them anywhere. I had, like, heaps of jeans in the bottom of the uh, cubicle because I was trying to pick the ones that I want. I'm like, where are my jeans? And I put my head out and I said, has anyone seen my jeans to put back on? They, the sales lady, uh, Rose, had grabbed them, folded them up and put them back on the uh. rack, on the sale, on for sale. Put on sale. Oh, your actual jeans? My actual jeans, jeans that I wore to Clexico were back oh. for sale. Well, that's a good sign. That's a good sign on the shelf. I thought these are trendy. Mm. Yeah, except I didn't want to walk home in my underpants. So I asked for the jeans back so I could put them on to wear them home. Really? They put them on the rack. Don't you think that's bizarre? <laughs> yeah. They're not even new jeans. You see Anastasia Palaszczuk yeah. outside. Well, she shops there. Yeah. She could be walking she... around in your jeans. Imagine if Anastasia had a bought them. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nine hundred dollars in the meantime. Yeah. Who oh. you got there? Anyone? Kate from Daisy Hill. What do you think about fashion? I've been wearing the same jeans for the last ten years. They're skinny jeans from Jeans West. The only thing I've done is upgrade sizes over the last ten years, and I don't think I'm going to change them. <laughs> And are you, are you accepted as being a trendy person within your social group? I don't really care, to be honest. I wear jeans and a black T-shirt most of the time. There you go. <laughs> well See? Said. Rock on. Yeah, damn straight. Yep. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Caught my eye yesterday when I saw the headline that Broncos player Reese Walsh slams fans who shove phones in his face in an Instagram story. And I'm like, what the hell? Uh... Bronco superstar Reese Walsh has taken to social media to blast fans who shove a phone in his face and demand a photo for Instagram. Hmm. Okay. And I'm like, okay. All right. So I think at this point probably should read the post and then we can um, we can all comment on it. Uh, all right. This is what he said. He said, if you're over 10 years old... And especially if you're a grown adult and you don't use your manners when asking for a photo, don't be shook when you get a no. We are people at the end of the day. Just expect these things. I love getting photos and chatting to everyone. But if you just put a phone in my face and demand a photo, I won't want to do it. Please and thank you goes a long way. Have a great day. Yeah, I've got no problem with that. Mm, when, said. when you read that, he, he. you kind of think, is that slamming fans? Well, I mean, he didn't say the word slamming. No, I am no, but that's what the article suggests, is yeah. that he was that's just Chris there. Jones' sub-editor's doing that. There was yeah. another clickbait one that wasn't quite true either. That he was slamming fans, When yeah. he said, um, don't be a sook. And he didn't say sook, he said, don't be shook. Don't mm. be shook. Don't be shook. Yes. Not oh, don't be a sook. Yeah, because I saw sook. Yes. Yeah, no, that was wrong. Yeah, too. I saw that as well. Oh. The, 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 word, the word sook doesn't appear there at all. No. Well, that's what I saw. That's all I took from whatever I saw this morning was he was calling people sooks. No. He was just saying, use your manners, which I totally agree with. Like You were saying yesterday how popular he is with the girls at Sid's um, he, he, college. He's got half, oh, a, half a million Instagram followers. I mean, there's there's movie stars that don't have that many people. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, there's people that have won Academy Awards that don't have half a million, million Instagram followers. Mm. He's easily the most popular NRL yeah. player in the country. Undeniable. Mm -hmm. Every kid wants to be him, and I, I can't imagine what it would be like to have that level of notoriety. So young as well. He's yeah. 21 years of age. I think back to a moment, I was literally this morning off the back of this, sitting at the Caxton one day with... The Bronx, I mean, I'm talking like maybe three or four years ago, Ben Teo was still there and Ben Teo said to me, you see that kid over there? And at that point, no one knew who he was. Just, he, just, like, he looked even younger, <laughs> yeah. just good-looking little rooster. And he said, that kid's going to be the next superstar. And I thought, we just had a moment just sitting there where he had, didn't have any fame yet, where he was just sitting there having a beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, we'll see what happens to that guy. And then bang. Now his life's completely different. Like he doesn't go anywhere without getting attention. And, and the other the other side of it, he, he he says there, if you're over ten years of age, and especially if you're a grown adult. I mean, kids are obviously going to run up, and you know most kids are still learning to use manners and all the rest of it. But if you are a grown adult, then you are just going up to him and and doing that. I can see how frustrating that would be. Now the flip side to that is, 
of course, there's going to be a day when people that won't want his photo, <laughs> you know, they won't want to get photographed with him. They'll probably, you know, that that, yeah. that the fame is fleeting. But I, um, and I know I've said this story before, but I, I, I have distinct memories of Fatty Vaught, and I did. Oh a, yes, I did a. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I did a, a, a dinner with Fatty one night at the Caxton Hotel, actually. And really, this, is, this was at the height of Fatty's fame. The Footy Show was the most popular show on television, mm. and we had dinner before we did whatever the mm. like an MC gig. You, yeah, we, we were doing an MC thing together, and so it was just Fatty and I sitting at a table at the Caxton, just the two of us. A guy comes up. Just some punter from the crowd comes up, puts, takes his thong off his foot, <laughs> and puts his thong on the table. Right, Fatty was having calamari, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he put the he put the thong right there, right next to the plate, right oh, next gross. to both of our plates. It was a small table, and goes, "Flat man, can you can you sign this?" And he's got like a Nico pen, his big filthy thong. Oh, that's disgusting. With his bare foot now there, Fatty got Fatty got the pen and signed it. And I was like, when he left, I was like, "What? What the hell, man? Like you had every, like that? That's like, disgusting. That's like I, I was angered. I wanted to say something to this bloke. Like, are you right? You animal? Mm. We're we're eating here. <laughs> and Fatty was just like, oh, it's just easier to sign it than to, uh, you know, than to, to fire up. Th- 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 than to fire up. Yeah. I couldn't believe the restraint that he showed that night. And I guess that's part and parcel if you're in that if you're in that. I suppose if, if you're that was, popular, you have to put up with it. Yeah, I suppose if he was rude, then it would have been, oh, Fatty, like, didn't give me an autograph. Or, yeah, I met Fatty once. He was yeah. a complete a-hole. Yeah. Wouldn't sign, my, wouldn't sign his autograph. You know, yeah. you hear a different level of it. But good on Reese for standing up to that, I reckon. Because that, so everyone, I. yeah, I think manners are everything. Like, I've got two young kids, and, and that's the biggest thing that we're trying to teach them at the moment, because that gets you a long way in life. Like... You know, I've got a two and a half year old, and if he, if he doesn't say thank you when I give him an ice cream, I don't give it to him. Like, I'm trying it's to think ridiculous. There was an NBA player, I think, the other day I saw on socials. Nick might have seen it or someone. Uh, and he, he, as he's walking off, and the kids are leaning over to get, um, you know, can I get an autograph, whatever? And the kid just went, sign this. And he went, no. And then he, the kid went, oh. And he went, say please, maybe. Oh, can you please sign this? Yeah, no worries. And he did it. Yeah. So there's an example of that. Where he's just drawing the line there. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's great that he's that he said it. Very good. And hopefully people follow it now and don't bug him too much. Yeah. Oh, he's going to get bugged. I think that comes with the territory. But I yeah, think but as nicely. Not yes. just Like it sounds like people are literally putting phones mm. in his face. Mm. What do you think is going to happen to him at training today with his teammates? Yeah. <laughs> 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 They'll be ruthless. <laughs> Oi. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. Sign it. The Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Swimming chat, which is what we're about to do now. Swimming. Uh, front and back pages again, everyone. Same as yesterday. It's oh, like yeah, the that's olden cool. days again. That's cool. I'm trying to think of my favourite event last night that I was watching. Mm, so many good ones. Uh-oh. First of all, I will say Emma McKinn got onto the team. I was curious to see how she was going to swim. She's been under the radar for a swam couple of pretty, years. I mean, not a swim pretty... You know, I mean, yeah, it was We close. have such high expectations of her. Don't we? You know, the commentary was like, oh, she's been spending arm a bit. She sort of faltered the last 10 metres, which she probably did, but yeah. six weeks ago. I thought her she, interview was good. Bowley knows what he's doing. She's yeah. still with Bowley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gave a big, um, which I enjoyed, a motivational speech saying just because you're the, you've won how many medals? I always forget her stats. She's won 11, five gold. 11 all Five up. gold. She goes, she's still is the same as five everyone Olympic else. gold. Yeah, has self-doubts and... You know, wanted to keep going, but was worried she was going to get back to where she's been, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's good she's on the team. How many has Kaylee McEwen won? Oh, I don't know. She did. Uh, oh, geez, I don't know. I'm really bad at stats, but I know she's going at these next Olympics. She'll be going for three individual gold medals, which no one has ever done. Because hundred, two and a back, and ah, two and a medley. I was amazed when mm. uh, she jumped up on the blocks. She, she's like my favourite. I don't know why. Mm. I just I like her because she's scrappy. Yeah, she's just a, she's, she's just tough, and yeah. she's. Um, I love that interview that she did after she won in Tokyo. Yeah, she swore, but I can't remember how. But it was just so natural. Uh, F yeah, I think she said. Yeah, she had a good interview last night too because she was getting asked benign, boring I've questions. I've got it here. You want to hear it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Your mum Sharon and your big sister Taylor are there watching. It's been such a difficult time for your whole family. Yeah. What would you like to say to your mum and your sister for now? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, woo! 
She went, woo <laughs> She did that last uh, night. She ended up just in the middle of a... Well, someone answered, asked her a dumb question and she just went, woo yeah. and walked off. She didn't swear, <laughs> she didn't swear this time. I didn't realise she was so young. Like when How she, old is she? Well, when she uh, came out and they introduced her, I, she's like 21 or 22. Is she? Yeah. So she must have just been a teenager when she won in wow. Tokyo. But, I mean, Gosh. there's Emma. Emma's 30. 30, yeah. Now, so potentially... Kaylee's still got another couple of Olympics ahead of her. She could she could become one of our oh yeah our greatest you know five Olympics five Olympic gold medals I think is the is the record for an individual okay swimmer Thorpe uh, and McKeon. yeah is that individual yeah. or both that's just five gold medals isn't it realize an individual I don't know I just saw the stat of on it oh, last thing, night yeah. well she seems really fresh doesn't she she seems like she still loves mm. it she changed coaches to Bowley as well Michael Bowl. Mm. Who actually is having the year off coaching next year? He so. said that after Tokyo. <laughs> he Bolly, will. Bolly will never retire. I think he'll have a year off. He's got to. He's a good coach. But yeah, he's such a good coach. He's a good you know coach. why? Because and I always thought he'd be too nice to be a good coach, Michael Bowl, because he he's not old school. He actually talks to the athletes like people, and find, you know what are they doing outside the pool? The mental side of it, I've never I've never seen anyone better. Mm. Like the way he reads his athletes. But he's nice, hey? Every day and gets them to get in there and mm. do their thing. I've never seen anyone like him. No. He's excellent. He's excellent. Uh, I see Dean, Box, Dean Boxall speaking of coaches. He looked as animated <laughs> as always yeah. last night. Ariane he, looked fantastic. She, yeah. Dean is coaching 30 athletes at these trials. 30 athletes at Open Nationals, at Olympic trials. Isn't that mental? He's got such a good stable of athletes. Like if he was like an institute of sport, you'd go, oh, that's a pretty good effort. You got 30, 30 <laughs> yeah. people to the... Um, well, it was a country. To the Olympics. <laughs> At the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. trials. He was that's animated. Uh, Arnie missed the world record by 0. 0.06 of a second. And what's your beef, Ash, with the world record person, the line? Oh, well, in oh. Kaylee's race, mm. they, they had the world record line ahead of where she was. So... For all intents and purposes, you thought that she she had broken the world yeah, record. She was ahead of the line. She, mm. she was ahead of yeah. the line, rather. Yeah, she yeah. Was, she was ahead of the line. So you thought that she'd broken the world record, and yeah. then they had to come on and explain, no, mm. uh, you know, they they stuffed it up. There was a problem with the world <laughs> yeah. record line. That was confusing. So did every spot get filled? One uh, two, one two. You know one, what? Two? In the women's hundred fly. Uh, Alex Perkins, a girl from the Sunshine Coast, who I've been talking to a bit, did the qualifying. She came second. She did the qualifying time in the morning. In the heat. In the heat and oh. missed it in the final. They can still pick out discretionary, maybe? Yeah, hopefully they choose yeah, her. Come on, she did in the heat. I, I think that's her main event. I don't think she does the tournament. Pick fly. the girl. I don't know. She's, anyway, it was, was great. I think everyone got it. The men's hunter breaststroke. Did you see that? That was the cutest one ever. Two newbies in the team. Yeah. Uh, they beat Stubble Will- Cook, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, he's mainly a tuna breaststroker, though. Right, 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 but um, Sam Williamson, and who was the other guy? The kid that finished Josh second. Young. Young. I, I didn't. Oh. I, I watched the interview, but I didn't listen to it. I had the volume down, but he looked like he was freezing. He was hugging himself. Like, was he cold? Or no, I think he, he, was he was just emotional. Of, they, were both, oh. they were both on the verge of tears. Oh, really? He was so cute. And then Josh Young, he did a big thank you. And I don't even know if he's Japanese, but he was doing the Japanese bow at the end. He said thank you to everyone and then he... Then Just he very courteous. Yeah. Courteously <laughs> bow, thank you, everyone. i tell you what's good too. supporting it's, him. It's like, <laughs> if you haven't watched it, watch it because it's all these names. Like, and, and the Olympics is just around the corner, so when they get to Paris... You'll yeah. have a, actually, again, a mm. vet, an interest in it. The thing, and they package it up really well and give yes. profiles on the swimmers. So yes. It's good. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. I'm smarter than... I'm smarter than Sue's. Brighton Homes are now offering up to $35,000 cash back on their homes. You don't need to be smarter than Sue's to live brighter and save more with Brighton. Down. Sherry. That's me. Albany Creek. Yes. Albany oh, Creek. Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Uh, you got the day off, rest and recovery day. Yes. Rest and recovery from what? Life. <laughs> uh, sometimes you need to the chill. The <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> What are we playing for? Hundred bucks? Did yeah, hundred bucks. Did Sue's it. have a loss at nine o'clock yesterday. Yeah, yep. I think it went at four hundred bucks, wasn't it? Yesterday. Yep. Are you aware, Sherry, that we're playing twice a day now? Smarter than Sue's? I am aware. Yeah. 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 
She got the, uh, the, the one yesterday at 9 a.m. was the, uh, if you were born 10 years ago, how old would you be? Oh, my God. Oh, my what was going goodness. on there? Oh, my goodness. Mm. I don't know. That, what... that was pretty easy. I did see that on Instagram. I'm like, okay, hopefully she's playing like that today. I'll be right. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell. You can't tell. <laughs> you should ask you know what you're going to get. Born 20 years ago, how old you are? See, yeah. see, let's do it again. Are yeah. uh, you ready? <laughs> yes, please. You ready, Sherry? Yes. Sorry. Buzz hasn't got it. Dylan, if you can find that yeah. song. Oh, the, Sherry, please. Oh, please. oh, hang on, hang on. Dylan's oh, hang done on. it. Here we no, 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 no. It's not it. Uh, Who sings it? Journey or someone. You know the song we're talking about, Sherry? I do, but I don't know who sings it. No. Oh, Sherry. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Steve Perry for Journey. Perry. I was right. There I was right. Go. Yeah, good, yeah. good get. Good get, David. All right, Sherry, you got 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Crow's yep. feet are often found where on the body? Eyes. Eyes. Actor Barry Keegan is famously dating which other celebrity? Pass. In what country was Albert Einstein born? Germany. How many legs do ants have? Six. How many degrees is a right angle? 90. Actor Barry Keegan is famously dating which other celebrity? Oh, oh no okay. idea. Okay, uh, went yeah. the distance. Oh, Sherry. I tell you not to pass, but you passed anyway. <laughs> Shoot up the clock. I know, but I had no idea. Yeah, oh, just say don't know, so you could have got yourself a few seconds. Would have saved, oh. would have saved probably about five or six seconds. Four seconds you had left Four on the clock seconds. at that moment. Oh, I hope, oh. That Sherry. hope that doesn't come back to bite you. Oh, oh Sherry. Sherry. <laughs> oh, Sherry. <laughs> oh, Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Let's bring in the gift. Oh, oh. Sounds always the same. Wow. In the wow. Faith so seen. In the bring in the gift. Oh, bring in the gift. Oh. Bring in the gift. Bring in the gift. Wow, that was outstanding. Is that new? No, I think we've had it before. She was on The Voice or oh, one of those, one of those shows. shows. Amazing. Susie O'Neill, hold the phone, Freddie. Confirming uh, Faith was on The Voice. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope she, did she win it? No, I don't think she did, unfortunately. Jeez. Oh, are you ready, Suze? I am ready. 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Crow's feet are often found where on the body? Near your eyes. Actor Barry Keegan is famously dating which other celebrity? Miranda Otto. In what country was Albert Einstein born? Uh, England. How many legs do ants have? Six. How many degrees is a right angle? 90. Stop the clock. Two cap. Oh, okay. Tight, tight, tight. The close. Mm. Sure is. What's Cherie doing? Are you doing some metal work in the background? Uh, no. It's your day off. Thank you. Hmm? You do it. your day off. You're meant to be taking I'm it easy. I'm getting a bucket of water. Oh, Sherry. Now? Sherry. Oh, I'm getting a bucket of water. It's a water on your day off. <laughs> I feel a lot more. What are you doing now? There's literally 10 minutes of live radio and you're filling the water oh, now. Well, this is not the time, Sherry. This is not the time. This is important to us. It's called OCD. Oh, shit, Inky, oh. your day off, you're ringing a radio show and filling a bucket. <laughs> You know what? Suze is answering her questions now. I've got 30 seconds up my sleeve. I'll just do some chores. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I want to know what you're doing with the bucket of water. Water yeah. and plants? No, I'm emptying it down the toilet so I can fill it up again to do the floor. A what? What? Mm. Hang on. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. 
You're filling up a bucket of water so you can empty it down the toilet. <laughs> what? What does that do? No, I'm emptying the bucket of water from yesterday's cleaning the floors down the toilet so I can uh, fill it up again today so I can mop the floors again. Uh, okay. How can we do right. it in the toilet and not in the sink? Is there a... Well, I don't know. I just think it cleans the toilet bowl like while that. I'm putting it down there. I yeah. like that. That's a great tip. Thank you. Why are you mopping two days, okay. in, a row, two days in a row? Same floors or Because I do floors? it every day. I have an issue. Oh, my goodness. Like you you mop your floors yeah. every day? Yes. Wow. I have a Labrador. I have a son and a husband that live at home. And I said. How often do you clean the bar? Hey, I mean, tell me, Tom, do you mop your floor, Ash? I mean, uh, Susie, what's your name? Susie? Not that often anymore. No. I only have one husband now. He doesn't shed much hair. <laughs> Sheree knows what I'm talking about, don't you, Sheree? I do. Yes. I don't know. No, do you squeegee your... I'm so many questions. Do you squeegee your glass every day? No, but I clean the shower once a week and I dust once a week. Okay. And I clean the toilets every day. Is, yeah. is squeegee your glass it. an algae or something? I don't know. Or you actually <laughs> ask? <laughs> well, you go through the, uh, go through the answers. Yeah, why don't we get to the answers? <laughs> yeah. I like Sheree. Uh, by the time we finish... Oh, now she's oh. vacuuming. Have you got a robot vacuum, Sheree? No, clearly not. No, I don't. I actually like vacuuming, and that would take my chore away from oh, me, so no. <laughs> you should be a cleaner. <laughs> Probably, like but no, then I wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah, she no, then I cleaning. wouldn't enjoy it. And he likes cleaning clean Why don't you guys exchange numbers and have this chat yeah. off air? <laughs> like Sheree. Good idea. Actually, yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. Sometimes you guys are crazy. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> Can I get to the answers? Please, or? please. Oh, the yeah, the yeah. bed's run out. We haven't even gone through come it on. yet. Start uh, with the ads. Oh, come on. <laughs> you don't want to ask what she does with the carpet? I'm curious. Uh, I won't. Crow's feet are often found where on the body? You both said eyes, and that is correct. Now, actor Barry Keegan. Who is that? He's famously dating. He's famously dating. Mm, like, not even dating. He's, he's, not. he's famously dating what other celebrity? Uh, you both passed or said, I don't know. Uh, Sabrina Carpenter. Oh, it's Barry Keegan. I I've never heard that. I've, I've, I've never heard of that before. Well, Barry Keegan was the guy from Saltburn. Well, that weird dude. Was it? Yes. The main character. He's dating Sabrina the Carpenter. One, weird what? looking little Irish fella. So this is what happens when you get the supernova strike questions. You know what? And I heard that he squeegees every day. <laughs> <laughs> He needed to after the last scene. It, it, <laughs> it's one all. <laughs> Good season. I think I needed a squeegee after watching that movie. Uh, how many legs Ooh. do ants have? You both said six. Six is correct. So it's two all. How many degrees is a right angle? You both said 90. That is correct. It's three all. And then this one. In what country was Albert Einstein born? Sue said England. That's wrong. Cherie uh. said Germany. That is correct. Cherie, you're smart. Oh, wow. Well. One hundred points. I bet you, I bet you like the German vacuum cleaners too, Sheree. Yeah, okay, David. Let's uh... <laughs> make it quick. Come on. Oh, okay. Um, right, okay. I'll. Um, I'll tell you too much time. <laughs> Amy Shark brings the uh, sadness to us uh, Brisbane Tourist Stage, October 26. I'm going to give you uh, uh, some tickets to that. Playing oh. all the hits and tracks from our new album, Sunday Sadness. Tickets to info at livenation.com.au. So, Amy Shark tickets at uh, River Stage. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. Is that awesome. all you're giving her? Well, she got $100 as well, and you said it'd be quick. <laughs> Well, I'll give you a good-looking rooster voucher as well. $100 good-looking rooster voucher. I use the Albion one. You can do whatever you want out there at Albany Creek. Probably nice out there as well. Uh, the home of the world-famous Coxol. Chicken Coxol. What don't, are you laughing don't at? Don't laugh at that, Shuri. Sure. No, you're encouraging him. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you taste it. It's actually amazing. Well done, Sherry. Awesome. Good awesome. Day. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Lutzi, you spoke about that athletics sort of fly on the wall documentary. Sprint. Sprint. Yeah, what what was that on? July 2 on Netflix it comes out. Okay. It's a couple weeks. All right, because there's another one that's coming out, like a fly on the wall documentary that I'm really interested in, which is Kylie Minogue. Yeah, I only just heard that literally on the news, I think, today. Yeah. So she signed a seven-figure deal. I reckon it could have nearly been an eight-figure deal. Mm. What's seven? Hang on, how many is the seven? Like a million. So you're saying it could have been $10 million. It could have been, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, well, you know what, though? I mean, they, it's Netflix, and they, Netflix yeah. do those comedy specials, and I think Chappelle got an eight-figure deal. Yeah. 
It was Am a bidding war. 50 mil or something? I remember something that being yeah, bandied around. Sure, that's not enough. No, it doesn't seem like Kylie. enough to me. How many figures has she got? Seven figures. Seven figures, right. Somewhere between 1 million and 9,999,999. Nine <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it was a bidding war between Apple and Disney for the, the rights to her life story. Um, because she's really come on the scene again uh, since last year. Padam, padam. Padam, padam. Padam, padam. Padam, padam. She won a Grammy for that mm. 20 years after she won her first Grammy. She won her first Grammy in 2004. Was oh, it the best dance track or something? Yeah, best pop dance track. Okay. And then 2024, Padam, padam. She just finished her Las Vegas residency. Oh, actually, she might still be going. They've offered her a residency for life. It was so successful. Really? Yeah, she did that. I was just reading about it at the Venetian, a hotel yeah. in Las Vegas. Wow. A thousand people. Uh, oh, it wow, was nothing. Thousand, yeah, 75 minutes a night. I was looking at her song list. It looked awesome. I, haven't, I actually haven't. I'm just realising now, like, uh, that sphere. Like, I've met so many people that have been to the sphere and watched. I, I can't think of one person that I've met that's been to the Kylie thing. Like, you'd think that that was... A big deal. Yeah. Well, how many, how many would the sphere hold? More than a thousand, wouldn't seven, it? Uh, so seven a, and a half. So this is probably. like an intimate thing, like a yeah. thousand people at Venetian. It's like one so of you probably wouldn't. But you'd think things. it'd be a rite of passage for the Aussies. If, like if you went to Vegas, you'd be interested to go and see Kylie. Mm. Was yeah. she there when you went over for the thing? Oh, she would have been, but it was, certainly wasn't on my radar. Yeah. I mean, Adele was there as well, but. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I was far too busy to be doing <laughs> such things as that, actually. Two and a half grand uh, will get you a ticket to Kylie's Intimate Vegas show. Is that how so much it that? is? So times a thousand? No. Somebody? That's what it says. Two and a half thousand dollars. US? Yep. I don't know. just says two and a half thousand dollars. She's probably dropping... Probably Australian. Four gigs a week. Yeah. She's, oh, making, holy she's making some bank there. Yeah. Well, I was trying to work out where she even lives these days because you know how it's like a fly in the warp, so presumably, and a documentary, so presumably they'll go over her past and, you know... Starting back in, at Neighbours, etc. Yeah, well, she was in Ramsey but, Street for a while. Yeah, but I actually she don't know. She was a know, mechanic. Yeah. I actually don't know too, to Scott. too much about her. I just said, when I started Googling her this morning, it says she bought a place in Melbourne a couple of years ago to be closer to her sister and her parents in Hawthorne East. Isn't that funny? Like back in, she's probably living in Melbourne now. She's Dan, sin- Danny. Danny Minogue, yeah. Oh, you just have the biggest crush on her. Yeah, I know, me too. Mm. I had that Toddler's calendar. Um, interestingly so for me, um, I mean, she has got an interesting story. I mean, she, her and Michael Hutchins, I'd, lo- I'd love to dig yeah. into that. Yeah, do you remember that? Like, apparently, Kylie, look, this, is, this is my mm. story. Kylie was super nerdy, um, wanted to sort of shed that image. She hooked up with Michael Hutchins from In Excess. Yeah. And he kind of changed all her wardrobe and her image. Remember yeah, she, she really me- Remember she got that really short pixie haircut? Yep. She started wearing the really short dresses yep. uh, with all sparkles and stuff, and she went a bit bad yes. bad girl, for a better word, Yeah. around that period of time. That It'd be interesting to get that sort of insight. She hasn't had any kids. She's um, single at the moment. She broke up with her last boyfriend. Is she? Yeah. So what's the thing? Uh, she's on a f- huge Netflix um, documentary, Seven Figure Deal. So I'm looking forward to that. It's, it doesn't got a name. Release date it. or anything? Mm, not really. At this point. Not yet, but I'm going to look out for that. I'll definitely watch that. Definitely. The Ash, Lutzi, and Susie O'Neill podcast. I like when we see the evolution of our listeners. You know, like we spoke to, I spoke to a guy about three years ago, uh, Tom Price, um, and we we spoke. Uh, he was a great in grade twelve at Villanova College. And I helped him out with actually a video for youth mental health charity that he'd started with a mate of his while he was at school called uh, You Are Not Alone. And um, I hadn't heard since. Um, and I found out the other day that uh, they have, they've been doing a fun run. They've done it for the last two years. Mm-hmm. And it's going gangbusters. So they've continued something that they've been working I worked on as you know, grade 12 kids at Villanova. And now as adults, they've actually have, have grown it. And it's pretty fantastic. They're they're hoping to get two thousand people this weekend wow. for the uh, "You Are Not Alone" fun run. So it's this Sunday, June sixteenth. Now I'll, I'll put the I think Nick's distances. Just, good question, and I don't th- know the answer. That's oh, hang on, yes, I do. It's a five kilometer run and walk. So it's just it's very simple. Five k run or walk. Um, there's live music. Um, food trucks, guest speakers, and most importantly, the guys tell me an open conversation around youth mental health mm. and all funds raised will help uh, You Are Not Alone to introduce education programs into schools around the state. Um, so that this is at the, uh, the South Bank Cultural Forecourt mm. from 9am this Sunday, June 16th. Uh, it's the You Are Not Alone fun run. 
Nick's just put details up on our social, so you can head to the Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill uh, Instagram page right now, and also yrna.com.au. And well done, Tommy, and uh, and and your mate for continuing yeah. on that and building that beyond school. Especially when they're at school to start that. That's amazing. Exactly. Very yeah, good. Great young guys. And let's hope you get over 2,000 people there on, on Sunday. Head to our socials for all the details if you want to have a trot on Sunday. The Ash Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. Beat the blues with a cheeky winter weekender. From cosy hinterland cabins to sun-soaked resorts. Book it all and more on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? Take me away! Nova's Trooper Day. Win your perfect holiday. Yeah, this is awesome. Every single day we're doing a brand new trip. Could be interstate, could be exploring our beautiful backyard here in Queensland like we are doing uh, right now with a trip to the Scenic Rim. It'll be cold out at the Scenic Rim. Mmm today. Good for winter. Crisp. Yep. Very crisp. And getting crisper. Mm-hmm. They're saying it's going to drop like to negative one around Oki near Toowoomba. Warwick's going to drop below zero. Mm. Is that the scenic room? Well, I don't know. We were talking about that yeah. yesterday. The, the dividing range around the dividing range. I just want to so memorise it from what I said yesterday. Around that area somewhere. The edge of the it's going to be pretty cold. Uh, Kiara from Ningi. Hello. Good morning. Where's Ningi? That's on uh, the near, Sorry? near Bradby Island. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sandstone Point territory. Yeah. yeah. Near the bar? Near the new bar there? Oyster bar? No, the water bar. <laughs> oh. The boat bar. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's lovely. I think we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the bar where the boats go through. The opening. What are you talking about? <laughs> the new bar on, on Bribey Island. On Bribey? Yeah. Are you, th- are you thinking of Stratty? No, I'm thinking of Bribey. Oh. Don't worry. I'm not aware of a new bar on Bribey. Are you still with us, Kiara? <laughs> yes, I'm That's still good. here. Is there a new bar on Bribey? Uh, not no. that I know of. <laughs> there isn't. She hasn't had her pills yet this morning. Hey. Kiara, don't worry about it. <laughs> Joe Rogan's. Joe <laughs> Rogan's. Anyway, what are we doing? <laughs> anyway, Kiara's won. Congratulations, Kiara. Nice. Ring the bell. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is a uh, beautiful uh, lover's weekend, nature lover's weekend away in the scenic rim. It is cold out there, but it's, it's the best place to be in winter, I reckon. Oh, big fire place. Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. spa. Yes. Yeah, we love the cold. Mm. Uh, human lovers could go too, not just nature lovers. She's funny, isn't she? You <laughs> uh, <laughs> stop funny. drawing today. What did you say? Human lovers can go, not just nature lovers. Yeah, you mentioned the spa. That's where human lovers <laughs> make out. <laughs> uh, enjoy the trip, uh, Kiara. Well done. Thank you so much. Keep listening if you can. <laughs> did your mum and dad have a holiday in the rim? No, uh, yes. Springbrook, remember? Yes, that's right. They did. I spoke about it yesterday. Yes, we Go to the did. podcast. I'm still you recovering. The mouse's mm. house. Yeah, the mouse's house. That's um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Johnny. <laughs> New trip to give away boy. today. <laughs> yeah. Stratty. Big daddy. Yeah, weekend, Stratty. A weekend Stratty. for two. Which out Stratty? Stratty. North, south. Um, I reckon whichever one you want. Yeah, I think it's just a yeah, go for your life sort of situation, this one. Mm. I reckon North Stratty, Ash. Point Lookout. You know, yeah. Cylinder Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the pub where I love? Cylinder Beach. That's north. That's where I That's love. That's Point Lookout, yeah. yeah. The Stratty Beach Hotel. Give me that mm. airy day of the week. Uh, the whales mm-hmm. will be coming past now. Yep. You'd see all the whales. Yeah. That's just me. <laughs> don't, don't start. <laughs> what were you going to say, <laughs> mate? It's you body surfing. Uh, all right. uh. <laughs> oh, there's a whale. No, no, no. That's a Bradenham. <laughs> It's all thanks to What If. You're only a What If Probably away won't. from a fun-filled backyard break. You can book accommodation, flights, activities and more on the What If app. What If it's Aussie for travel. Let's look fashion. Have you got the song ready? Yeah, fashion. I've always got it Please. ready. Turn to the left. Fashion. Turn to the left. Fashion. Fashion. Oh, I love this song. Bowie. We are the good squad and we're coming to town. Beep, beep. There's no segment here. We just wanted to play the song. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. The Prince is on. The Prince is on. The Prince is on. Who is on the streets? The Prince is on. Not my 
best, not the worst. Yeah. I'll live with it. <laughs> Improve. Improved from yesterday. It's all right. Head into the weekend, guys. Uh, look, uh, hello, guys. Welcome. Uh, Tuesday, 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 Tuesday mate. is back. Yeah, uh, I know. It's, you know. I'm already looking ahead, guys. Jesus, it's been, it's been a long week. It's only week, Tuesday yeah. morning. Well. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. It's it's already been a long one. Uh, Takeaway Tuesday, though. It, it's one of my favourites. Look, if you are new to Takeaway Tuesday, every Monday Nick chucks something up on our Instagram and uh, we could be sorting you and your workplace out with a good feed every single Tuesday. So look to register your workplace, uh, just as Tammy has done. Uh, we're here at G-Bung, Ada Keg. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, Mitch. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Now you registered last week. Said, yeah, you thought you had absolutely no chance of winning. Absolutely. I was just saying to the girls on Friday that I've registered, but what are the chances of winning? And then I got a phone call yesterday, so I was pretty stoked. Brilliant. Now, you uh, it's been a big week for you as far as coming along and winning tickets. Uh, something else you're a bit of a fan of that happened a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, so I was um, lucky to win tickets to Susie's Butterflies and Bangers. <laughs> Bangers. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. So you did really well, Susie. It was awesome. Thank I had a great you. night. I'm glad We've sort of been time. reliving our favourite moments from the night, haven't yeah, we, Tim? So it was, it was very really good. Cool, really cool. Now, how are you guys uh, fearing it? I mean, tell us about Ada Care here at G-Bung. What are you guys doing? Um, so we're a healthcare uh, specialist um, company. So we look after all people um, with disabilities. So we build their chairs for them. We also obviously supply walkers and scooters and that, nice. um, help out the elderly and the aged care facility. So we do a range of things. Doing absolutely brilliant work. A very well-deserved winner of a Takeaway Tuesday. Uh, joining us this week, Yo! MG Burgers, guys. Uh, this one's exciting. They're just down the road at Westfield Chermside. So on. working out very well for you, Tammy. These uh, guys, they're... They're, they're big in Melbourne. They've got eight locations down there. This is actually their first interstate store. Wow. And they've come straight up to Brisbane and uh, over to Westfield Chermside. Uh, and they're having fun with some of their burger names as well, guys. There's, I mean, there's, there's the Yo Mai with cheese. There's the Howler, uh, the True Blue. Uh, the Muffler. I don't know what's going on there, guys. Uh, and then the California like Dream. Grilled chicken, Swiss cheese, bacon, pineapple, lettuce, tomato, avocado, mayo. On Ooh, a purple doggy. On a purple bun. Yum. I don't mind the idea of that there, Tammy, as well. They've got, you know, they've got vegans one there sorted out. A bow town as well. So you get a bow bun, hot chilli fried chicken, slaw sweet chilli. Mar- it sounds good. They are at Westside Chermside. And thanks to the guys at Yo MG Burgers, I'll give you that. Your code there, $300 of Yo MG Burgers. Oh, what? First okay. interstate. So I know. Nice. That's a lot of burgers, Tammy. That's You're- a lot of burgers. I'm stoked. My You're- team's going to be stoked too. Gonna- you got a lot of mouths to feed here? Yeah, we've got about 20 to 25. I so think that'll sort them out very nicely. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to, is it Yo's Burgers? Yo MG yeah. Burgers, Yo Westside Churnside, and the first much. interstate store. So I get yeah. along and uh, and help out, known for their burgers and frozen yogurt as well. So maybe a couple of desserts for you and the guys here at Adicare. Yeah, definitely uh-huh. for sure. All right, brilliant. Thank you. Takeaway Tuesday, look out for that registration next Monday. And we could be coming out to you uh, next Tuesday for Takeaway Tuesday. Yeah, Yo MG, nice buns, great vibes. Now at Westfield Churnside. That's a great credit check line, that too. Out. Yeah. They got good looking bell on nice the buns. Yeah. The King's Way looks good. Double beef, double cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion, ketchup, secret sauce. The Bajerk. Excuse me? Southern fried chicken, cheese, lettuce, tomato, chipotle mayo. Ooh, that's got me. The Bajerk. Is it the Bajerk, maybe? That would make more sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Jiren. Bajerk. Gherkins. That's okay. Oh, the Gherkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your mind only goes one way. I couldn't eat that one because I used to know that guy called me Gherk. I used to work here. Well, you could eat a Bajerk. I could easily eat a yeah. Bajerk. <laughs> The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. The uh, eyes of the tech world are focused on Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, which is taking place in the US at the moment. And Trevor Long, who we've spoken to on the show plenty of times before, our tech expert, is there and uh, joins us. Now, good morning, Trevor. What have been the biggest takeaways so far from from this conference? Yeah, good morning. It is, uh, it's a big one because they've, they've had to catch up in the world of AI. You know, if you talk about artificial, artificial intelligence, everyone talks about ChatGPT. A lot of people using Google and Microsoft very big. So where's Apple, right? So they've announced AI of their own and they're calling it Apple Intelligence. So they're basically rewriting the, uh, <laughs> the rule book on AI. Well. But their big thing is privacy. Their big thing is it's all happening on your phone or on your Mac. It's not, you know, something you can't trust. It's something you really can trust. It's not using some random private company out there that you don't know. But if you want the power of ChatGPT, they're allowing that to be used, but it'll prompt you. It'll say, do you want to use ChatGPT for this? So it's allowing us all to use ChatGPT, but they're putting a barrier in there so that we know that we're leaving the private, personal Apple ecosystem. I think that's pretty smart. So that's going to come to uh, iPhones from later this year. How is that different from Siri? Like, you know, you can ask Siri stuff now. Is that different to ChatGPT? 
is not very good at answering mm-hmm. things. So Siri's mm-hmm. going to get a lot smarter. You'll be able to ask Siri to do things for you within a lot more of your apps. Siri will have a bit more conversational understanding. So if you ask Siri, what's the weather in, in, in Melbourne, and then say, um, remind me tomorrow to book a trip there. By saying there, Siri knows you're talking about Melbourne. So there's context. So Siri is getting smarter, but mm, not amazingly smart because of that barrier between the knowledge of ChatGPT and Siri on your device. Apple Vision Pro is the thing that I'm excited about in relation to sporting and entertainment and how it's going to change our lives over the next decade. Uh, and I hear it's coming to Australia. That's that's a big that's a bit of noise given that I don't, I don't, I don't, it was uh, identified about a year ago as new technology. Yeah, huge news. It was announced one year ago uh, right here at, at Apple's headquarters, and then it was only made available in America. But it is now launching in Australia on July the 12th, pre-orders June 28th. It will be priced at $5,999. So yeah. look, the NBA have an unbelievable app in this thing where you can watch like five games at a time. It looks yeah. like you're in a sports bar, but you're in your own lounge room. If we can get something like... KO or Stan Sports to integrate this kind of thing, it yeah, could be huge, huge uh, but it, it is an expensive product. It's, a, it it's a headset you put on your head and you can still see the room you're in, but you can then use things like uh, an app can project up onto your wall and things like that. It can look fantastic. Yeah, the, the implications that are going to be massive. I'm excited, particularly relating to the 20, to 30, 2032 Olympics, Trevor, in Brisbane. Could be huge. Yeah. Mm, Could be so huge. If they can integrate this kind of technology into the Olympics, uh, yep. it would be a fantastic way to watch it. So are, are they like the, uh, the AI? That sounds pretty exciting, that Apple Vision Pro, although I can't quite picture it, but um, that does seem, although expensive, it seems pretty exciting. What else is there that's taken you by surprise? Anything? bunch of changes coming to your iPhone later this year. I'll tell you one that's fun. Um, you can lock your apps. So, you know, when you hand your phone to someone to say, oh, yeah, look at this web page or look at this whatever mm-hmm. it is, and mm-hmm. you're worried about them swiping away mm-hmm. and opening up that app you've got, oh, yeah. you yes. can lock that app, whether it's your photos, Apple, something else. Uh, might be, you know, so you're on a weight loss challenge. You don't want someone to see what you weigh. You can <laughs> lock that app so it requires Face ID to open, and you can hide apps in a hidden folder. So I like that idea of giving us a bit more privacy when we share our phone. Yeah, I think you're and universally, we agree with that one. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. Oh, <laughs> for different reasons. I've got kids, so that, that really yeah, appeals to me. And <laughs> just, lastly, the thing that's really bugs me about Apple is all the different charge cables. I've heard that they're going to go to one, one that does everything eventually. When's that going to happen? As of last, the last iPhone, the iPhone 15, pretty much every product is now uh, USB-C. There's a couple left, like a keyboard and a mouse that need to transfer over, but pretty much now, when I travel, I just travel with one USB-C charger and it charges everything. Nice. Oh God. Thanks, Trevor. Appreciate it. That was awesome, Cheers, bro. anytime. That's uh, Trevor Long at the US Apple good. headquarters. Yeah, the big worldwide developers conference going on at the moment. Yeah, there's huge stuff with that stuff. I want to ha- I'll have a chat with your fear about that, mate. Yeah. Big stuff coming. You know, I think we get it right. Potentially, Brisbane 2032 can be the first event globally to probably utilise this at the Olympic Games. What, that thing? That's, that's ages away. I want it, I want it for the finals no, for the it's football here, it's this here year. now, but I'm right. saying the way that can change the way that we mm. watch and entertainment and sport is beyond even what we can think of at the moment. Like it's the, the, and it's going to happen in the next decade. It's going to be crazy. I'm talking like, in my mind, like watching the Olympics opening ceremony from your lounge room, completely immersed as if you're there mm-hmm. with the with this software or hardware, rather goggles, whatever, whatever it is, in eight years. Won't be long until you're, you're like watching sport in the perspective of one of the players playing, I reckon. Literally, you'll be uh, at Noah Lyles in lane four, the 100 metres, running with his perspective as if you're there at mm. the stadium or halfway down the track or like, like in, or, the, in the swing pool. Origin from a halfback. Origin from the referee, from, the, from anyone, from anywhere. Yeah. No, not the referee. <laughs> <laughs> the Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. World Class Racing and Brisbane's finest hospitality. The Star Stradbroke Day, June 15, Eagle Farm Racecourse. Book at brc.com.au. Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill's Fashion or Philly. You know what? Weather was looking really good for this uh, weekend. Perfect uh, race day weather. We had a, a good day at Eagle Farm on the weekend. Lutzi and I did. Yeah, that was huge. Stradbroke mm. doesn't get any bigger though. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Stradbroke, Stradbroke's this weekend. It is indeed. Mm-hmm. Star Stradbroke. Yep. This Saturday, Eagle Farm. Nell. Hey. <laughs> Will you head out to the races on Saturday? I would love to head out to the races Saturday. Oh, the good weather. 
I mean, not just Indeed. normal tickets to the races. This is tickets to the tote room deck. Yeah, this is massive. That would be awesome. <laughs> mm. memory, it was five hours of drinks and canapes. Correct. It is. It is. I remember that. Sounds dangerous. And fun. Too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this is a similar vantage point to where the uh, Nova tables were, let's see, on the weekend as well. Just yeah. before the uh, the finish line. Yeah, you get a good look at them coming down the straight and a uh, great vantage point. Mm. And your, your own facilities, which is even better. You get your own oh, bars, bathroom. yep. bathrooms as well. Okay, yeah. I like that. Yep. It's fantastic. Let's not forget the uh, $1,500 Westfield voucher as well, Nell, that you'll win on Friday, hopefully. Any luck, any luck, let's see. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a name. Now, it's either a fashion house or it's a racehorse. Okay. If you get it right, you're in the draw. Okay? Okay, cool. Yep. All right, the name is Romance Was Born. Does it sound like a fashion I'm... label or a horse? No, a horse. You're going to lock that in? Your horse? Yep, horse. Oh, no. oh, bugger. Bugger, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a fashion label. Oh, a, are you kidding? It's an Australian It sounds fashion. like a horse name. It, it is. It's, a, it's, a, it's an Australian fashion label. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, bad luck. Oh, I've never heard of it either, Nell. <laughs> nah, it's just oh. a silly fashion name, let's just say it. Yeah, it's silly. <laughs> silly. <laughs> Definitely a horse name. Oh, oh well, no. bugger. That's all good. Mm. Sorry about that. Nothing much you can no say, worries, really. Guys. Have a great day. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, guys. That means <laughs> Have a good one. At the moment, there's only one person in the draw. Yeah. Oh. Can we try to sort Nell out with something off air, please? Because she sounds Yeah, she was lovely. lovely. She was lovely. She's lovely. Yeah. She was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a piece of clothing from Romance was born. Oh, we, can't, we can't afford yeah, that. Yeah. Is it expensive stuff? A little bit. Oh, yeah, it's very expensive. I'm having a look at it on the website, Is actually. It? Yeah, they make... Uh, what do they make? Uh, 2005 they started. They make garments as mm-hmm. well as wallpaper and furniture. What? And art. Really? They've got all sorts of things. Yeah, they've got jewellery as well. Maybe it's the same look, you know, for wallpaper as your clothes. You can camouflage yourself into your wall. Yeah. If you want. Mm. Probably, anyway. Probably not. Yeah. World Class Racing and Brisbane's finest hospitality, the Star Stradbroke Day. It is happening this weekend, June 15, Eagle Farm Racecourse. If you want to head along, of course, keep listening. We'll do Fashions or Philly tomorrow, or you can book at brc.com.au. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast. I'm smarter than... I'm smarter than Suze. Brighton Homes are now offering up to $35,000 cash back on their homes. You don't need to be smarter than Suze to live brighter and save more with Brighton. Hey, Vanessa, how are you? You good? good. That's yes. the way. That's the way. Uh, uh, good luck to you. My friend, Thank I hope that you. Uh, you win here. It's only worth a hundred bucks, but you know what? That's better than nothing. Yeah, Lutz, Lutz, he's got the kickback cave, absolutely chocker. Yeah, lot, whatever your poison is. Goodies, so we've got something for you in there. Wh- whether you That's win or right. lose, okay? Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's go. Good luck. Thirty seconds Thank on the you. clock. Your time starts now. What instrument measures temperature? Thermometer. What is the national sport of Canada? Uh, ice hockey. What singer named albums after mathematical symbols? No, don't know. What country is Mount Fuji in? Don't know. Spell recruit. R E C R U I T E. Stop the clock. What did you throw in? E. 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 Yeah. You took a bit of time to say stop the clock, so I'm going to give you two seconds, Vanessa. So rewind Thank just you. a little bit from where Ash said stop the clock. That's called mm. discretion. Uh, well, you have two seconds left on the yep. clock. I think you're up against it, Vanessa, but not to worry. That's all right. Oh, geez, your whole voice just changed there. That's all right. Oh, not even jar. <laughs> yeah, Vanessa, is that cool? That's cool, yep. Ash. No, she's back. Let's bring in the gimp. I want to be the gimp, the gimp. Oh, no Lockie. one ever does. get through is my real test. So smart and she is I know it's my destiny. Wow. 
outstanding. Yeah, huh? Very good. He's got a good voice on him. Yeah. Yeah, Who is it? Sings, that's Lockie. Sings, remember? Lockie. That's Lockie. Church. Yeah. I, I thought that he only played the guitar when he was shitting his pants out there on church. When, when he, he was shitting his pants, he was, he yeah. was playing guitar. Yeah, but he sings also. He sings yeah. as well. Mm. Oh, my God. I mean, you know. Triple threat. Oh, he started singing after the therapy when he did that with yeah. his guitar. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It helped. Look, yeah. I mean, the collection plate would be full. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he. Losing O'Neill! Ah. Hold the phone, Freddy! <laughs> Losing O'Neill! <laughs> There's so much wrong uh, with that conversation. But Lockie, that's like, not what we meant when we said, we hope you fill the collection plate. If there's anyone who's not offended by that conversation, give us a call. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's oh. uh, we'll put you through to Matty Rowe. It's too yeah. funny. <laughs> All right, Suze, 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. What instrument measures temperature? A thermometer. What is the national sport of Canada? Ice hockey. What singer named albums after mathematical symbols? Ed Sheeran. What country is Mount Fuji in? Japan. Spell recruit. R-E-C-U... R-E-C-R-U-I-T. Stop the clock. R-E-C-R-U-I-T. Mm, was that right? Yeah, no, that, it was right. That, we got your correct, correction. I think I was, like, getting excited before the last question. Vanessa, you spelt that one wrong if we can start yeah. from the bottom and work up. I'm no E. I'm referring to Lockie here at all. So, yeah, you put the E in the end. You went R-E-C-R-U-I-T-E. <laughs> at the end yeah. of it, I couldn't well, believe it. You, you had it. You had it. It was in the bag. Uh, Sue's one nil. What country is Mount Fuji in? Vanessa, you didn't know that. Sue said it was in Japan. That is correct. Two nil. What singer named albums after mathematical symbols? You didn't know that, Vanessa. Sue's knew it was Ed. That is correct. The national sport of Canada. You both said ice hockey, and that's correct. Uh, you could have said lacrosse as well. Yeah, I thought that. Mm, yeah. Lacrosse evidently is the summer sport, yeah. and then the winter sport is ice hockey. Yeah, and the instrument that measures temperature is the thermometer. Dun, 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 dun. 5 2 victory, Sue's phenomenal. Don't get it. Thermometer. Dun, 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 dun. Thermometer. Sounds like it. <laughs> to the cave! You always make them laugh, Butsy. What are you... What? Hey, go on. What are you into, uh, Vanessa? We've got a lot on the board here. I've got tickets to the swimming. I've got an Amy Shark tickets. I've got... Uh, I've got a lot of food, a lot of uh, drinky drinkies, if that's your thing as well, at, at bars. What do you want? Woof. Food. Food, okay. Okay. Swimming. <laughs> swimming and food. Okay, I'm going to give you four tickets to the 2024 Australian Swimming Trials. This is this Friday you're going to go, June 14. It'll be a huge night at the Brisbane Aquatic Centre at Chandler. And I'm also going to give you a $100 Hay Chica voucher. Now nice. you can enjoy yeah, the, the best tacos, all that sort of business. Yum. Brunswick Street Mall. It is so good there. You're gonna, you're gonna, Sounds good. You're going to love it. You just got to love it. Yum. Um. On you, Vanessa. Mm. Thank you. And here's Lutzi with a live rendition of the Thermometer song. Banana boat. Thermometer. Thermometer. The Ash, Lutzi and Susie O'Neill podcast is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.